What's up YouTube? Isaac coming at you today with a real life review of the Rogue Backpack from Timbuktu. Cat assisted. <laughs> Alright, so as I mentioned in the opener, today's uh, video is going to be a real life review after four years of nearly daily carry with this particular bag right here, which is the Rogue Backpack from Timbuktu. I'm going to tell you exactly why I chose this bag, I'm going to tell you exactly how I use it, in what context, and I'm going to show you the specific features of the bag, and I'm going to talk about all of its strengths and weaknesses. All right, the things that I really like about it and the things that are sort of driving me crazy after four years. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about durability and materials. And hopefully by the end of this review, if you're wondering, should you buy this bag, you're going to have your answer. Okay, so first things first, this is the Rogue Backpack from Timbuktu. They have quite a number of bags. They're a fairly famous bag company by this day, uh, headquartered in San Francisco making very quality bags, uh, manufacturing overseas, uh, but with an eye towards design and with some thought put into the bag. So they're pretty good quality bags and they have a range of price points. Um, this particular bag is one of their cheaper bags. Uh, MSRP is about $79. Although if you look on the internet, you can find it for cheaper. I believe I paid about $40 when I bought this bag four years ago. Uh, this is uh, one of their daily carry bags and it's meant for uh, flexible daily use from being able to ride a bike and use it in that context to just carrying it on the subway, throwing it in the car, and yeah, you could potentially use this for minimal uh, travel, right? One bag travel, and I'll get into that in, in a little bit. Um, this particular bag is uh, uh, on the outside finished with their tarpaulin material, that is a sort of rubberized or plasticized material that's impervious to all kinds of things, including water and cat noses, which my buddy Cotton here is demonstrating very nicely. Uh, it also comes in some other materials with other color options. I chose the tarpaulin material because it's water resistant. I'm not gonna say this is a waterproof bag, it's not advertised as that. The entire bag is not made out of the tarpaulin, but the front of the bag is definitely covered in this more water resistant material. Um, it is a flap top bag. It has two uh, sort of snap locks, safety lock kind of things, and some Velcro right here. And the, basically the bag opens up like this. And you can get inside to access the single main compartment. Essentially what it is is a basic uh, backpack. It's got a sternum strap. It's got, the, uh, <laughs> it's got the ubiquitous Timbuktu bottle opener. No hip pad, uh, no hip strap, no way to attach one, not meant to be used in that way. The back is this sort of mesh uh, nylon material, supposed to be breathable, and the bottom of the pads are like that as well. It's got a single carry strap up here, water bottle pocket on this side, this sort of military-esque pseudo molly on this side, and on the front it has a single quick access pocket here, and some molly here, and I'll show you in a little bit, this is meant to put your bike lock over here. Really, when you're using the bag in daily, uh, daily carry, this is a pocket that you're gonna get into and out of a lot, all right? What's really nice about it is it's dimensional. It's uh, got some space, so even if the bag is pretty full, you can get into it, although if you overpack it, it starts to get really tight. Um, this is a bag where I'm keeping keys, handkerchief, and maybe some tissues or something like that. Um, depending on how you like to carry, you can put your phone in here, your wallet in here. I don't like to put my phone and my wallet in with my keys because the keys will mess up. As you can see, I've got a lot of keys. It's a heavy keychain. If you're a one key kind of person, well, you have a bit more flexibility in that regard. The rest of the bag is essentially one big compartment with just a little bit more organization on the inside. So you open that up and you'll hear that there is Velcro, all right? This is not a silent, close and open kind of bag. If you're in the library or a lecture or a movie theater or something like that, people are gonna hear when you open that bag. Inside the bag is the main compartment here. There is a laptop holder right here, which has this sort of uh, 
elastic Velcro strap if you want. It's just mesh. There's no, I can't really show you. Um, maybe I'll zoom in here in a little bit. It's just mesh, right? There's no real padding on the inside. And then you can pull your laptop in here. I have a small laptop. I keep it in this sort of uh, pouch because I can keep the power cable and dongles and all that right in here. It's sized to fit up to a 15 inch uh, laptop. I'm using a 13, there's plenty of space. Um, when it's in here, it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. There's about an inch and a half or so of space. But as you can see, and I'll get into it, that changes with time, all right? The back does have some, uh, like one little strip of plastic right down the middle. And I find that doesn't keep the bag very rigid. It doesn't, as you can see, like to stand up straight. It tends to flop over like that. In terms of capacity, I've got a book in here. You can easily fit a couple of sweaters, a uh, jacket, uh, lunch, that kind of stuff. And the only other organization that exists on this bag is this panel right here. And this is really one of my main frustrations because this is all you get. And so I have to cram everything I need on a daily basis into just this panel. Now, there is probably enough for most situations, but sometimes I feel this gets really overloaded and it pulls down, as you can see here, when you have to load it up that much. So what do I have in here? Well, basically there's two flat pockets here, sized to fit a phone pretty nicely. Um, you can also fit a wallet in there. I sometimes put a wallet in front. Um, I put business cards, right? You gotta have those. I put my sunglasses in here. I'm not putting them in the quick access pocket because they're gonna get scratched, all right? So I put them in here. Um, got a couple of pens on this side. There's three pen slots, so that's pretty good. Uh, and then there is this zipper panel right here. And this is where you gotta put everything else, right? So in here I've got my wallet. I've got charging cable for my phone. I've got headphones. I've got a couple of dongles. And that's it for now, all right? So there's a lot that has to go into this. And this is really your only other sort of zipper compartment on here um, that can keep you organized. I like to put everything that I don't want stolen in this uh, particular panel. So that includes wallet, uh, cell phone, and uh, you know a couple other things sometimes in there. The water bottle pocket. This is just mesh with a little elastic, sized perfectly for this kind of water bottle. Um, and maybe a little bit bigger. It uh, serves this function perfectly good. The bag is overpacked. It gets a little, little tricky to get in and out, but it has a little bit of dimension to it. Not a lot. Enough for it to work in sort of daily situation. So really, that's it in terms of organization. So, now that I've gone through the basic uh, components of the bag, let me talk a little bit about how it is to use it in a daily situation and then about wear and tear after four uh, years. And finally, we'll end up talking about should you buy the bag yourself, all right? So I chose to buy this bag. I was looking for a bag that wouldn't break the bank, that could go from cycle commuting, which I do uh, fairly regularly, um, that was reasonably weatherproof. I live in the Southwest, it used to be Arizona, and now here in sunny San Diego. So rain isn't a huge concern of mine, but you know, it does drizzle from time to time. I wanted something that would be comfortable um, and that could be used for at least short-term minimalist travel, a weekend away, a quick business trip, something like that. And after scouring the internet, you know, looking for deals and looking for a quality bag, I finally settled on this particular one due to its size, 25 liters, seems to be pretty perfect for an everyday carry size bag. Um, and then it's combination of on paper features to the price point. I really liked the tarpaulin material. I wish more of the bag was made out of it. The sides are made out of ordinary nylon, all right? Uh, I have ridden with this on my bike in uh, monsoon storms, summer monsoon storms, and, and things stayed pretty dry. One weak point is the flap, right? The flap when it's closed, if it's, uh, you can see here, if you're not careful, there is this sort of uh, extra flap of material that can be opened and water can easily definitely get in there, get into your computer and your other stuff, and that's not what you want. So if you uh, want to be careful, just make sure that the sides are tucked, right, when you've got this thing done. And then it actually does a pretty admirable job. 
This zipper is not weatherproof. It's a good zipper, but it is not a weatherproof zipper. So I have noticed when it has rained, water has gotten into this zipper. So that's another reason why I don't put my phone in there, especially during potential inclement weather. The simplicity of a top access bag is great. Here, it's marred by just a couple of things, all right? One is the Velcro. I'm just not a fan of that sound, right? If I'm trying to use this in a business context or somewhere quiet, like I said, like a library, something like that, that's not a sound that you want to hear, all right? There are other ways to do this. Magnets would be fantastic, um, or even just getting rid of it. Let's talk about these buckles, all right? There are two of them. Why are there two of them? You don't need two buckles to keep a flap closed, all right? There are two because they're small, and as you see when you open them up, the sort of male part of the buckle is on this strap of webbing and it falls back like this. And what happens is you have this open, it falls back into that, you go to close it, and now you've zipped up one of the, one of the male sides of the buckles in here, and so you get that stuck and you can't get it out, all right? That's really dumb. They should put the male buckle on the flap, pointing down, and the female buckle sewed very nicely right here. They should use wider ones, and you should only have one. A good aspect of the um, top is that you can, in fact, overstuff the bag pretty full. And if you pull out these guys like this, I'll show you, you can actually fit a lot into this bag, right? You can, you can probably increase it beyond its stated 25 liter capacity, which is great if you have to stop really quickly on your bike to get some groceries. Um, I'll tell you one thing, a wine bottle fits perfectly over here in the bottle carrier. The Molly, right? This side, I don't know. I, are you a Molly person? Do you have Molly pouches? Maybe this will work for you. I don't know if this is standard Molly. It doesn't seem like it, from what I can tell. It just seems Molly-esque, let's say. For me, it's a total waste. I would rather have another water bottle pocket on this side. Honestly, honestly, all right? Um, this guy in the front, uh, you can indeed fit a U-lock here, but I find it sits really low so that the U is actually falling way below the bag. And if you try and ride your bike with that, it often gets caught on the saddle. Hugely frustrating when you try to get on and off the bike and you're stuck to it with your U-lock hanging down. Not only that, but hanging a U-lock there puts a lot of weight in an awkward position. If you try and open and close this quick access pocket, it's really impossible with a heavy U-lock hanging off the back here. So good idea, wrong spot. It should be up here. It should be actually on the top panel. You should have the slot right here for the U-lock. Timbuktu provides you with a sort of the, the loop part of a hook and loop closure like Velcro right here. Why? Patches? I don't know. They don't sell any accessories. It'd be nice if you could put some reflective, retro reflective patches here. Like, so when you're riding your bike at night, right? The headlights bounce off of it. Can't do it. Can't find anything to fit on there. Seems very strange. Don't know why they, they've included that. The straps, right? They're reasonably padded. They have padding in there. It's fine. They're not contoured. I find when you load this bag up, due to the fact that there's no hip strap, these things can dig into your neck, sort of right here and right here over time. So I don't like it when it's super full. I almost never fill it up all the way anymore. Uh, I find you almost always have to have the sternum strap closed across your chest for it to be comfortable. Otherwise, the straps start to spread. They've got these really robust attachment points up here, but they just, they just don't hold them in the right place. They just want to spread open like that, all right? Handle is just okay. It works. It's not nice to hold. It is what it is, all right? Um, the back mesh, all right? The back mesh panel doesn't have a lot of airflow, so your back will sweat, all right? This is... Uh, uh, marketed as a cycle backpack and you will sweat when you ride your bike with this period right no way around it it's not the best for that i find one of the biggest annoyances about this is that there's only one piece of plastic down the middle and as you can see it it bent almost immediately meaning my laptop is no longer suspended off the ground and also meaning that the bag tends to fall down this way all right um you'll notice right here 
there is, after four years, some wear. This is a major contact point with the lower part of my back, and the mesh is wearing through a little bit. Um, it's not major, it's not wearing through into the bag, but, you know, four years, right? And the mesh is wearing out in pockets here. This little strip of tarpaulin is also wearing down here at the bottom from being set down on the ground. It's the way it is. Um, the rest of the bag, the rest of the tarpaulin material is pretty good. It's, everything else seems to be pretty durable, except uh, right up here where the um, straps attach, right? The straps themselves are in there. They're not coming out. They're really well uh, constructed, but the tarpaulin is pulling off right here where the straps attach to the top of the bag. That's the main bit of wear and tear on this particular bag. I said after four years, uh, occasional bike commuting, uh, uh, going in by transit, throwing it in the back of the car, and occasionally using it as a single bag travel bag for, like I said, a weekend trip or two. And it works okay in that regard. Uh, if you got, um, for example, a small packing cube, a slightly larger packing cube, and then your toiletry kit, and if that's all you need and your laptop, you can travel for a good week. Uh, I've traveled up to four or five days. Everything I need, I'm a very minimalist traveler at this point. I've gone to conferences and I you know, know all the secrets, bringing just two pairs of pants and a couple of shirts and a bunch of real thin, quick drying undershirts that you can wash in the hotel, that kind of stuff. You can definitely get away with this. But like I said, on your back, it starts to get kind of heavy and it's, it can, at that point, you're pushing its capacity. In a daily carry capacity, it's very comfortable, right? Just your laptop, your keys, wallet, phone, maybe a sweater, maybe lunch, something like that. Perfectly fine, no issues with it at all. So, four years in, would I recommend buying this bag to you? And I think the answer is, despite my few uh, little criticisms of this bag, if you can find it at a good discount, I say it's a no-brainer. Buy it. If you can buy it, I think I said I paid about $40, $50 for it. If you can find it at that price, yeah, buy it. Would I pay $79 for this particular bag? Mm, I think at that point, I might look for an upgrade, right? I'm getting into the price territory at that point where I want some of those minor nags to be fixed, right? I, I think I definitely got my money's worth out of it in the four years that I've owned it. I'm going to continue using it as my daily carry for the, the time being. Um, I may not use it very much anymore as a single bag travel bag, as I think there are definitely bags that do a better job at that. So, with that being said, I think my final verdict on this bag is if you can find it on sale, buy it. If you can only get it at full price, I would look for perhaps one at a slightly higher quality level. One with a little bit more thought into some of the design details. I hope this video has helped you make up your mind. If you liked it, if you want to see more videos of this kind, please hit like, please subscribe, and please leave a comment below. It's very useful for me to know if these videos are getting out there and making a difference, and it motivates me. You know, I'm a small content creator, below the threshold to make any money on YouTube, no ad revenue or anything like that anymore. It was pulled away from me. So I just do this uh, because I like doing this. So if you've liked this video, let me know. Uh, I really like hearing that. And I really like hearing for you, from you. Catch you on the flip side.